This is Flash Somebody at the Dork Table on Saturday, the 24th of November, 2018. And we're coming to you today live, live I tell you, from the reallibertymedia.com <coughs> extravaganza. Anyway, uh, Grimner over there at RLM carries carries the uh, dark table all kinds of places but um, if you're hearing it so you already know where you're at I don't know why you'd want to shop around for a better deal if you're already on BitChute or whatever else what Spreaker I like Spreaker I like BitChute then you got the problem of deciding who to use for the different shows I don't know the uh competitive world out there anyway I'm gonna say hi to the people at the RLM we got and bots and folk alike we're, we're non-discriminative here <clears throat> and good luck with that one there Vinny uh, anyway barman Grimner moose girl miss Kate anti asmo chalcedony hello honey circle Chloe D underscore C echelon me Gooberzilla, I B Don, C J Dread, Meister Brow, Pox Fide, Pox Phone, Pone Sauce, Rain, R L M Fluke, Rooms, Fitty, The Phantom, Beetle, Colfax 101, Cyborg, Noodle, Noodle, Dakota, Mental, The Hell's Up, Dork Cakes, Frump Two, Frump E. Gromit, Java Doctor 2, J's, Nines, J's, Kozu, Mmm, Sock Puppet, and Skittle. And that's the the locals today hanging out to create a disturbance. Give me something to chitter chatter about. Because uh, I used to do the dork table with a partner. And then I keep killing my partners, so did it solo. Now it's like, hmm. I think I'm going to do a dork table. Uh, good, 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 good. And here we have it. So anyway, what's been going on in the world around me is very dull and mundane. So I have to look for exciting things on the interwebs to stimulate my brain cells you know get me thinking about anything besides um, what I'm doing at the moment or what I can see in front of me because I'm pretty simple now you know all the political crap and uh, world geography it's for trivia and if you know it you know it and if you don't know it so what you don't win trivia big deal it's not like the it's not like the world took a shit on you or anything but some people are hmm, more serious than others. And uh, hmm. uh, I think he means Andre the Giant in C's Link. But I don't know. Maybe Andre is the new giant that people read about. See, I don't even keep up on, a, on the normal everyday stuff that goes on, let alone the, the big shit. But I uh, I did once, you know, I knew what was going on. But it was really simple to uh, to see it and understand it for myself. But for other people to get a grasp of what I was talking about, oh, it wasn't very popular. Mm. Let's see. Uh, here I am, live, doing a dork table podcast from the real liberty media dot com. Uh, channel 8 on the dark table. Yeah, see, I pay attention to some things, just not everything. And then, shit, half the time I forget stuff. But I have this magic green stuff that helps me not give a shit when I forget. <laughs> so, being as it's 420 somewhere, we'll say greetings and salutations. May you enjoy the rest of your day as I plan to enjoy it. Mine. <sighs> hey, you know what? It's all illegal any damn way. So it doesn't make any difference. 
Let me look at my list of topics and see. Oh, we've got when the dollar crashes. Um, hmm. Let's get revenge. I like that one. That was a kind of interesting. Uh, pool of sharks. Voters feed. Uh, challenge with slang. Hmm. Wonder what that was about. And prohibition regulate and punish. So, hmm, what's on my dorky old mind today? Hmm. I don't know. The I'll tell you the 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 tale of the washing machine extravaganza. Uh, me and Cirque had to get the the clothes cleaner replaced, and apparently there's a little discrepancy after the final installation of the machine and something was amiss so she got me on uh, a telephone call to be instructed on what to do with the new machine to make sure that it's working appropriately or it needs a repairman so I listened to the guy and he told me what to do and I did it and everything worked just fine and my wife was happy but she wasn't happy about the machine not doing what it was supposed to the second that she touched it because she's Danish and when they sell shit to you here, they they really understand you don't have to know anything about a washing machine to buy one. You just got to at least know how to work it, but it's not assumed by the system that, well, being as you have one of these things, you must be an expert and know how to run it how to tear it apart and rebuild it because uh, in the states the laws are written so that if anything goes wrong it's the f purchaser's fault and the, the retailers is liable for as little as possible it leans in their direction as far as I'm concerned and I don't think of much of the uh, judicial system in the first place 12 strangers are going to they're going to debate your fate with no knowledge of you at all. Just a story they're hearing from somebody that wants to fuck you out of some money. Hmm. So, there you go. But, uh, anyway, I got lost in when I was starting to think about <laughs> the Admiralty Court and, and how we're deceived, you know, through the media, TV, and movies. And they do a really good job because I've been to court and I've never seen the, the court I see on television is not the court I see when I've seen the court. That was kind of boring, dull, mundane, um, very not formal, but restricted. You could just feel the tension in the air in a, in a state court. Never been to the federal court. <laughs> I don't think it would be any difference. The state, to me, not not to you guys out there in radio land listening to this crazy shit, but, you know, my opinion of it, how I see it. It's not the most popular. <laughs> it's very uh, unpopular to voice an opinion that I have or that I share with other people about the society that I even live in today because as good as it is it's got its flaws well of course this is a different show so flaws are us I mean that's what we do we have all the knowledge and right in front of us on computers right here's the problem is we're outnumbered basically I believe that the people that really, truly need to see the shit that we know as a collective, you know, from medicine to the truth about cannabis, uh, the, the truth about the police, what else, finance, oh, there you go, unleash the Federal Reserve Banking, fractional reserve banking system. <sighs> And I don't think that there's a lot of people out outside that, if they're not even interested to be online or they're too busy, chances are they don't have a clue what we'd be talking about in the first place. And uh, 
poor people don't have to debate freedom because the they don't have anything left, so they think they got freedom. That's just uh, beaten into you. Like uh, it's like common sense. Well, if you don't have anything, then you're free. Hmm. But if you don't have anything and you're dependent on the state to survive, well, you're not free anymore. See, then you're a controlled nuisance to the middle class. Keep those fuckers working for the rich people. And I'm not the first one. I mean, crying out loud, that's George Carlin was saying that shit 40 years ago. But he went too far with it at the end, and they probably give him a heart attack pill took care of George but he says well I probably lived to be 100 but he made it to 75 hmm. I would consider that way off let's see what's going on the RLM chat we got Woody and Grimnir and Mental and Beetle in deep conversation about stuff cars and <clears throat> whatever have you who knows Woody's ranting about something Grimner's teasing at Vinny <sighs> hey Vinny I remember saying hey to you now anyway so what are we gonna do in the you know in the future with our hmm, limited understanding of what's around us you know is they tell they told me when I was in school, oh this, that and the other. And even though the table's solid, <laughs> there's more to the world than uh the few things that they pointed out in, in my school days, you know. And half of the people they referred to in history didn't do what they said they did. Mm. I think one of my favorites is the Lincoln story. Because there's even alternative stories to the why uh, he was assassinated in the first place. I mean, happenstance. Okay, he's the president, and sure, you're a target to a certain groups of people, period. So, hmm. But, according to folklore, I can't remember where I read it, on the internet somewhere, possibility it's true that Lincoln had a second family in the South somewhere. Can't remember the state. Can't quote that part. But that Mary found out about the other people and decided to do away with his ass. And that it was coincidence that the rest of it happened. But apparently there was some kind of link between her and the assassin that they claim shot him. But then again, American history, they lie about every fucking thing. So, I don't know. Maybe John Wilkes Booth didn't do shit. Maybe all he did, he was a partner. And he's the one that took the fall for it and ran and broke his leg and all. You don't know. You weren't there to see it. So, all we get is other people's versions of what they read. Okay. Or we'll read what somebody else was told to write. However the hell you cut it. Hey, Rob Works showed up. Uh, good. Rob's usually got a cruel thing or two to throw into the dork table conversation that I'm having today. See, people showed up, but they're not questioning my fine intellectual dork mind with anything in particular. Just letting me rant about whatever comes along, I suppose. Like, let's see. Tech. Hey, there you go. Fire up the bubbler. It's 420 somewhere. Being as I don't care about the clock, I'll just use that term so we all know what it means. Everybody's in tune. Let me stoke a pipe load in honor of the upcoming ceremony that we're going to give to the flower that makes the world s smile at each other. That's what... Uh, cannabis is guilty of if you want to punish something punish cannabis because everybody that smokes cannabis usually just goes hey where's the cookies you know you very rarely do you ever 
get a fuck you out of somebody after you smoke a bowl or a spliff or whatever have you. A bong. <clears throat> so I think the government's going in the wrong direction with their force and intrusion. And I think it's high time I'm going to start a movement. Make all the politicians smoke pot before they open session. Not one of them should be potless. Then, see how long they can lie for. Hmm? 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 That's what I think. I don't think they could sell us the, the bullshit that they sell us if they were stoned. And if they were, they'd give it away because it would be, somebody would make a joke or it, it would just be a different world. So, uh, here I am with my little dream about, you know, the grown-ups playing like children. If they, if they did, they'd clean this mess up in like six months tops. Put your mind to it. You can do anything. So, if they could do all this destruction and killing and shit, right, then think of all the good they could do if they just changed directions. But they got all these games to play. Religion and education Ooh, uh, look, look at the Arab and the Jew. And, and it turns out in the end, these people are in business together against us. And if you look at the, if you look at the information available to you through the internet, I suppose you could find that truth in it. Doesn't mean you'd agree with me, but we would be ultimately looking at the same exact thing and some of us unfortunately, getting a, a different result from the information and thinking that the the person doing all the harm is the victim. <clears throat> Those people, the Jews, you know, my people or whatever the fuck that's all about. Um, they're, they got to be the victors and everything. You can't fight them. You can't argue with them. If you try to, de they're like Al Gore. You try to debate them, and you're just, you just hate them. Wait a minute. <laughs> so they've got societies all confused right now, running around in different directions, thinking that right and wrong are, you know, you can dictate a law that will create it, and that's not the way it works. But it does seem to assist them. Because they write these like laws for dumping chemicals in the in the water, the drinking water, whatever is eventually gonna become drinking water for us, the corporations that that use all these create synthetics and and make all this waste. That's just pure garbage for humans, right? It's just not good. Not one bit of it is. It's palatable anyway so they dump that shit within the confines of the laws their buddies wrote with a fine at the end of it so in the 10 or 20 years it takes to get to court to fine them so they've done all the damage already so fuck what is the point it's it instead of saying these things aren't okay to do period don't don't do them like that they do them, and we suffer as a collective because the voters don't know how to say enough's enough. And hold on one second. Ah, I was enjoying my elixir and other things. Anyway, so... What haven't we bitched about at the dork table? I pretty much stayed off of the political, but sometimes the politics just annoying as shit. You know, two complete fucking baboon losing ass wipes, and they're both running for the same fucking job, and it's supposed to be the most important job in the world. And all it is is the... Whoever gets it is the front man for a really fucked up band of called the Bankers. And the Bankers run everything. Good God, you got to reg you guys regulate regulations. It's it's so ridiculous. You can't get anything done 
for the safety, and then they use that global warming shit. They got regulations based on bullshit law. You know, we all know it. I've heard Grimm and Moose just frustrated as fuck because <laughs> the, we're a collective. We are Borg, says Grimner. And Rob works the voters like Bill the Cat when he's all fucked up. And Woody says, oh, Meister Brow says, we are group thinkers, question mark. Grim, are you a Democrat? Fuck, who cares? What difference does it freaking make in the first place? Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or a communist or what the fuck? It, it, it's just what you believe in your head any damn way. It's got nothing to do with with the reality that we live in. And, and if you live in these bullshit societies and they teach you all these horror stories about way over there, that the only way you're going to ever physically see shit like that is to join the military, then in your normal life, most people way over there never actually comes to reality. They read about it, they see it on TV or internet, but feel touch it no it's just stories shoved in their face by other people and i think it numbs them to how serious some of this shit is you know because uh i read <laughs> i don't know if this is true but i read that hillary clinton is going to run for the president in 2020 I'll drink to that because, man, that's worth drinking over. Ah, thank you. That was my elixir. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Anyway, the RLM has got the love chat going on. People are being decent to each other and acting like civilized members of the electronic society. That's kind of nice. I try to do that. I don't know. I don't always succeed, but I try. Give it my best. Some people don't. Um, they don't appreciate my version of the truth. And I get to understand that just from knowing what I think. I mean, in the first place, my position on it though is not the popular. Uh, nine out of ten people agree with me, kind of thing. It's. Mine is one out of ten people agree, and then what's left, everybody sees it differently. But it just never comes to violence. You don't need to be violent to solve a disagreement. Violence is just a way to make money. I mean, especially if you look at the scale of how they do it, you know. You talk a bunch of kids in a group and up in big numbers and penetrating the fucking fortress and take what the fuck so where do we get it history books because well they've been doing it since the dawn of mankind invading each other and plundering well if you consider all this crap where does the necessity of that behavior come into play in in society and it, what it, how it works out is Without that, you virtually have no international trade. The profits to be made off of uh, war, probably a hundred times what you can make out on peacetime. Peacetime is cheap. People don't need to arm up against the enemy because there ain't one. But no, that's flashed a trooper. <laughs> Thanks, Grimner. Uh, but yeah, eh. But we're all played like, like we're idiots because, and it's, it sounds unfair, but it's because some people's indoctrination, it seems to grab them so tightly that they carry it into adulthood and play this game out till they die instead of watching the game play out or grouping with other people that play it but not play it yourself but maybe it's the appeal to be remembered 
Oh, I want people a hundred years from now to know who I was. I don't know why that matters in the first place, because I've heard all the names that everybody else heard, and George Washington and Donald Trump and old Obama, who else, you know, Edison, and I, maybe I'm just not starstruck enough, you know, by uh, the wonders of history, <laughs> or, or all the accomplishments of that people in that are in the celebrity, you know, because they do so much for everybody else, crying out loud. I don't know what they do for anybody else, but they must do something. I can't figure it out. Uh, to me, they seem like a, to keep what they got, they got to play this, this game. They, they work, keep working, keep doing live thing, live this, live that. Have opinions in this area of society. Spew this and spew that. Just like everything else, they're, they're corporate entities owned by other corporate entities trying to make money so celebrity kind of i kind of got disappointed when after all these all the years of uh, fake mccartney that it was true I said wow fuck now there's f so much proof out there so who is who is this guy that they call paul Turns out he's a better musician than the original one was. But that's still not the point, you know. He took over another guy's life and still to this day lives it. A one-line description of today's Dark Table show would be... I took a... I took a left at... In, at I took a left at Heathrow. Succeeded by the T-bomber. Ah, the O-bomber. Yeah, now we've got the T-bomber. Well, it wouldn't matter who's, you know. My stand on this is whatever Monsatin wants, Monsatin gets. And, you know, what we've got in the White House is obviously, you've seen him on fucking television, the guy knows how to read a, a script. And you might think he's talking off the cuff, and that's the way he reads his script. It's just, it sounds so raw and uh, unprofessional that he gets credit for being, you know, off the cuff. But for fuck's sake, this guy's supposed to be a, a political figurehead and not you know, Mayor McCheese's ruthless competition. No. The, anyway, he's between him and, and Bush and Obama and Clinton. Go back all the way to Nixon. Since I was a kid, every every president that's come has cheapened the office that much more after they left. They all left it on some, you know, in worse shape than it was in when they first sat down. Every damn one of them. And then they blame the fractional, well, the Federal Reserve Bank, blah, blah, blah. It's the banking practice that screws us. Thank you, Israel. You know, that's why you're at war with the Arabs. It's about banking, because the Arabs don't do the Jew banking. Only dummies like us get stuck doing the Jew banking. Boy. And that's not a popular thing to say. You go, oh, you're anti-Semitic and all this crap. They don't even know what the fuck anti-Semitic means. They got told it means you don't like the Jews. What the fuck has got liking the Jews got to do with the truth one way or the other? And they all sucked, says Rob Works of the RealLibertyMedia.com chat. Yep, I took a left at Heathrow. And that's how I got to Denmark. You know, they go, how did you find Denmark? I said, made a left at Heathrow. <laughs> so I was coming in from the north. <laughs> that was a long time. Well, maybe not long, but five. Coming at five years. 
been here almost and still love it haven't got bored of denmark yet strange usually i i've never lasted um this long i was taking pictures of the neighborhood because you know things change people improve their homes a little bit some people don't take care up care very good some people take real good care and there's no judgment about it there's no uh corporate entity that comes knocking on your door because your grass is too high <laughs> you know if that's what you're gonna do that's what you're gonna do and winter will kill it off anyway but yeah and it, some people are very meticulous and they do a lot you know to make their little home their prisons here on the main street here look pretty and i think a lot of that so i take shots of the some of the houses around us and uh, i've been planning to put them up on rlo but i didn't take them off the camera yet to do it but i'll get around to it it's going to be a long winter so by the time christmas comes around i'll probably put up a picture or two of the neighborhood homes real exciting shit goes on in Denmark in the wee hours of the morning. I just not here where I live. <laughs> I found Denmark just fine. It was okay. I've never been to some of the places that uh, the press and the government gripes the most about. But the places I I have been to were were griped and pissed about, and I didn't. I didn't find any problem where I went, you know, provided that I was doing the, you know, the anarchist thing and not creating a big fucking havoc traveling through somebody's place. You know, it's not real hard to just get off the road and get a meal and get a hotel and leave the next day. Mm. Reminds me, I had a, a, a trip to Scotland the one before this last one that brought me to Denmark, I went to, in 1996, I went to go visit my folks in a, in a place called, uh, what was that called? Uh, well, it was in the Orkney Islands. I can't remember the, Westry Island, that's it. I was there for about six months. Real small island population of about 600, and for for the weekends I'd hit, you know I'd take the ferry into the mainland to go to Kirkwall, and it was kind of exciting at the time. You know, people would say, "Wow, what are you doing all the way out here?" Well, my parents, my mother was English, so she wanted to go home, and after she saw London again wasn't impressed and they started to move north and they kept just kept moving north they lived in a few places before that and uh i think they were in wales for three years but i didn't go to visit them through it and anyway so they end up in westry orkney the orkney islands this place is uh, famous for puffins puffins that's it of all the things in the world to be known for hey what are your people known for Nuclear bombs. What are your people known for? Puffins. <laughs> hey! Are you guys giving me making nose jokes? They're making nose jokes on the realliberty.com. That's right, reallibertymedia.com. They're making nose jokes about Jewish people. Beware. If you get your feelings hurt about having a big Jewish nose, don't don't listen to this program. You will be thoroughly disappointed when I make fun of my own Jewish nose. But, I mean, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. So. <laughs> and we all know that these fuckers, they got us beat. At our, there, there's no getting out of it. There, the more you look at it. So, I mean, I was talking the other day about it. I'm not so much seeing this financial thing as a whole. I see it as a path, you know. And the further you get down it, the more experience you have with it. So you know what you're dealing with. And some people don't learn anything. They just travel down it 
and blindly do as they're told without question of any kind. Don't want an answer. Don't require an answer. They're just, yes, sir, no, sir. Where do I sign? <laughs> and I know that's true because some of the people that do the other end of the business are, are like that about the laws re that regarding their own business. They don't know what they're doing. They They know what they think they're doing, but they don't give two squats about how it's legally done. Does no interest at all. Hmm. So that is my opinion about what's wrong with everything is that we're, we're not all taught the same thing the same way. So we have hundreds of millions of different versions of how society works out there all jamming and cramming into each other trying to be right instead of doing something that's proven to be right they argue about well this isn't that bad for you come on be a man don't be such a pussy about it come on a little mercury in your inoculation pussy boy get a set of balls what's wrong with you mercury it's not like mercury is gonna kill you or maim you or anything no 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 that's just shit they tell you at school to scare you so <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you grow up and be stupid. Mm. I mean, I cannot figure it out any other way because the way I understand the nature of an inoculation is you're putting some foreign entity into that magic bloodstream that keeps you alive. You know, whatever that shit is flowing through your body all day long. That's like magic goo. So... Let's see, these scientists want me to let them put something in my magic goo. And, well, what kind of result are they expecting to get out of this? And w what studying do they do to the, get to the point where they're going to experiment on me? And, well, as you all know, well, of course it does, Rob Works. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course society is good for all especially if you run it but if you live in it it's got its disappointments and its disappointments are all based on greed and uh, boy the education system pumping people full of complete fucking fantasy now now it's gotten to if this is true or not i i would assume it's true because life is pretty bad in the real world <laughs> but uh, on the college campuses that being negative about things is bad for the person reading the negative hmm so, okay, Rob's saying he doesn't believe it, society works. Well, you wrote it. Now he writes he doesn't believe it. I think we have to, where's, get security. Rob works is having a breakdown. Schizophrenic moment, or maybe there's somebody pretending to be our very own Rob works on the RLM. <laughs> security, security, help, help. <laughs> What are we going to do? Yeah, oh, I I didn't know you didn't know what a puffin is. But, yeah, shit. But there you go. Six months. And uh, I was, like, visiting this little place where it was very clear. You know, these people all knew each other. They're all related to each other and this, that, and the other. So, hmm. Well, the American guy, whoops. Well, not too many people were very friendly, so to speak. You know, a few, a handful. And most of them were from somewhere else, their self. So, but that's, you know, that's the nature of the beast. The real world is between your fucking ears, Rob Works. That's the point I've been trying to make on the radio. For many a year to date is that whatever I believe to be true, <laughs> boom, there you have it. Try to change my mind. Now, if, if you're in a position with somebody else to try to change their mind about something, and it's never going to happen. Yeah, it's a given. You've said 
two words in the same sentence that have no business being used together. And that's change and mind in the sentence. No, negative, negative. You can't change anybody's mind. Nobody changes their mind. But they got us to talk like that. And I believe Mary and Vince are on to something deep when they... <laughs> uh, wow! Rob's getting all violent with his AR-15 and come in, get it. I don't want it. You keep your gun, son. I don't need your gun. I'm fine where I'm at, mister. You just be cool. <laughs> don't hurt me. <laughs> with your, you know, plutonium bullets oh yeah i was telling you guys the other day or last week been reading about and listening to hmm. we've been hustled on uh, plut uh not plutonium but nuclear and not in the traditional sense of hustled that accidents can't happen with this shit unless you allow to things to occur simultaneously and that would have to be a decision that made them happen together they wouldn't just naturally happen at the same time we would have to physically involve man into the equation all right so he proves this to me and then, and then he explains i don't see i don't know how true it is but he explained verbally that you could physically handle in the uh, tubes so much plutonium blah 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 and that it, the government had written the most minuscule amount of this stuff at, as a danger level to make it a big demon like they did with cannabis now that we do have nuclear problems and but they're again just like 9-11 they're not uh, they're not a freak of nature. They're they're man-made. People decided to do this and took the physical actions necessary to do it. And then when they were finished doing it, they blamed and lied about it for years and years and years. Now, if they'll do that with that, why would it be so hard to believe that the accidents that they've had with nuclear were were on purpose? There's no other way to explain them if, in fact, Galen Windsor's information is, is the truth. Now, when I look at it, I was raised with the opposite of what the man said. And I watched him do this on film. Could have been something else. But according to what I saw, he handled radioactive something. Boo, 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 boo. There you go. And it, it's it's the difference between the guy and uh, Monsanto saying, I'll drink a glass of Roundup. And then when they offered him a glass of Roundup, he wouldn't drink it. What do you think? I'm fucking crazy? Okay, well, that's one guy working for Monsanto. This other guy, Windsor, he did what he said he would do on film to prove that he was telling the truth. Now, here we are. And we still, we're, we're stuck with these stories that we were raised with. And the education system, whatever whatever I learned way back in the day, today seems like a big fucking joke. I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't see the reality to the story that I've been presented. I see a completely different reality. You know, if it, it's like the same thing as driving a car okay when you think about it if you are at risk in a driving a car situation it would be from some form of carelessness or fault somebody fell asleep behind the wheel uh, something malfunctioned and the gas pedal wouldn't release and they floored into somebody else something but it's an outside interference and that's the same thing with the the way he explained the nuclear now of course doesn't really help but it he did make a point of saying that it's tasteless and outside of the geiger counter there's no way to uh, physically see it 
there's no tell that radiation is there without the counter thing. So what does that prove? It proves that it's there. But we've got government regulations that misinform us about levels of this and levels of that. And without hands-on experience, what are you going to do? You're going to believe the guy that said, hey, don't do that. It's dangerous. And unfortunately for us, hmm, the side they push the hardest through the media and the schools is the side that's telling the biggest story global warming people it's in schools the united nations got their hands on this shit i mean these idiots I, the science fiction is all this is and nothing nothing less it's it's a good story and i'm impressed but to make to make law and that's the foundation of your law. It has nothing to do with honesty, but it's got everything to do with fucking everybody out of as much as you can fuck them out of. It's not about right or wrong. It's about how much. And if you're going to put this kind of shit on a scale, I'd rather be at a, a right or wrong kind of scale. Fucking balancing your bank account, that's not going to help if we're all eating and breathing the same shit. You know, fuck. Oh, the external might be, oh, they eat steak and drive in a Rolls Royce. Mm. Well, what good is that if they're really using the same electricity and the same basic shit food that we are? Because apparently, I mean, of all this crap I've read about celebrities, these people are millionaires. They have more money than they can ever fucking spend in their life, but they're too ignorant to read a book and learn that... There's physical cures for cancer at an early stage of finding out that they got it. No, these people die of cancer. How? What exactly killed them? You know? Uh, but everybody's an expert now because, well, we've got the group illusion and we've got the internet. Now, I heard Facebook was taking a little slap in the face. I think it was earlier in the week, since uh, since Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. And Rob is bouncing in and out of the chat room. Maybe he got yeah, he's got some issues with his carrier, you know. And yeah, how they fuck us with uh, limited information, you know, because these thieves are well, they're they're allowing the the smallest margin of what the law requires. So they make some fucking ridiculous minimum that barely carries a load worth even selling. And then if you want more, they they charge you for more when they could just, just give it to you. No, but we're taught how things have a value depending on how much of it you use. Oh, right. Please. So, I mean, it works with artichokes, but it doesn't work with electric... Uh, not the electricity itself, but the things that are manufactured because you're using the electricity. So, I mean, it, it, we're just like, uh, we're allowed to do things if you pay the price to the man and blah, 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 blah. And after, you know, after all these years of playing it and seeing everything degrade from the time I was young to the time I'm at now. Ooh, some things just, uh, hmm. it was like the, uh, the privilege of smoking on a bus, you know, when I was in England. And I got a giggle out of that. I could go up on the top deck of this double-decker bus and it had windows and shit. And you're up there looking at everything and it was really cool. And you could have a smoke. Well, the year, the year I was there the, the second time, they decided to change that law. Went, oh, man. You know, so every little privilege that you have in society to, to act up a little bit has been chipped at and, and chiseled. And, and then eventually when they tell you free speech, uh, no, Hyde's Park, no, we don't do that anymore. You got a, a free speech zone now. And in that free speech zone are monitors to protect you from your own ignorance. And they'll kick the shit out of anybody. They don't care. 
Hey, what kills everybody? You know, what what killed the Mayans? I think it was the Mayans. Might be wrong, but whoever lived in Mexico in the 1500s, because that is boy, Europe is some. Those are some badass motherfuckers that live out there. Wow. And the descendants of those crazy bastards, they went and raped a whole country. <laughs> Took everything. We burned it to the ground. <sighs> then they claimed that whatever was there was lost because they couldn't find it. <laughs> you know, And here we are. So, I mean, we live in just this complete life total bullshit from the minute you wake up in the morning to the minute that you close your eyes at night i wonder how much actual bullshit we intake without our own without our without our consent but on top of that without our knowledge just from constantly being done to all over and over and over you know the pounding of a lifetime you uh at some point i guess we become immune to it and it, it doesn't have a doesn't have a striking effect on the behavior you know it's just so ingrained and so in, in 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 me that i'm on autopilot about it but sometimes i think hmm i don't uh, i don't have that inclination to, to shop you know and spend money on stuff and hoard and all and that that the less stuff I got, the better. And still got enough stuff. But, uh, hmm. But I'm still not, like, a, what do you call it? Conservative. You know, I don't know. I'm losing my mind on the dork table again. And we're having Rob Works and Dirt Cakes are up here saying something crazy and unusual. Washington's erroneous notion that the Persian Gulf is an American lake. What? No, that's, come on, that's just, that Washington Post or something. I mean, where did that come from? Antiwar.com. Okay. Hmm. No, the Mayans didn't leave anywhere, man. And anyway, that's what I mean. All these governments and groups and gangs of pirates over the fucking centuries, they've done this to each other. And it's a big world. You, you can't be accountable for every fucking speck of land on the planet. There's 200 countries. Who the hell is going to keep track of all the good and or bad going in all those places all at the same time? No, it's an illusion. They're conning you with their um, computer crap. You know, algorithms prove this and this proves that. Yeah, to them. The, and look at the shit they're working on. You know, they're playing off a, a society of, yes, sir. Would you like that with or without cheese? And I'll tell you, I think I've told this one before, but uh, I, get, I told somebody as a, what they thought was a joke at the time that you cannot go to a fast food uh, restaurant of any kind, any chain restaurant or any place for that fact that sells uh, like food to go. You can't get a plain hamburger. It just never works that way. I don't know why. <laughs> but And and the reason that I, I proved it, <laughs> had a friend, would you get me a plain hamburger at McDonald's? said okay that was all i went for i i didn't want anything but she wanted a plain hamburger and the girl at the checkout asked me like five or six times and guy got pissed off i said no i just want a plain fucking hamburger and she looks up at me and says sir you know that's no reason to get rude and raise your voice and cuss at me I said, well, maybe not, but, you know, tomorrow morning I might wake up in a better mood and you're still going to be a fucking idiot. Now, can I get my plain hamburger? <laughs> and I've grown up a lot since those days. That was a few years ago. But, uh, yeah, it was it was insulting to me as a 
as a customer, you know, to be ignored like that and and have this little girl try to sell me something that I didn't want because, you know, what I wanted didn't suit her, I suppose. I didn't ask for no drinks. I didn't want any drinks. No, just this. No fries. They don't want you to tap dance for me. You know, no. <laughs> anyway, so that that to me is just uh, how how we've been uh, conditioned where when I was young, the customer's input in the conversation mattered. So the people that actually did the retail job understood what the fuck the guy at the other end of the dollar bill was saying and today I don't think we have a lot of that going on anymore and in fact the the less <laughs> the less you speak to people in retail <laughs> the better <laughs> the way I've, I've I'm going off what I've seen <laughs> from the shit at Walmart though because I haven't been a, in an American store since 2011 by God and country so, I'm not an authority on the State of the Union at this point. I think, uh, I don't know. I'll probably croak out in this part of the world, but not tomorrow. Cirque's got plans for me. She's got many, many ideas, and she keeps uh, keeps doing her thing, so, eh. I'll probably be around for a few more days. And I almost finished my puzzle before the show. I've got like 100 pieces left to go out of 4,000. She got me a couple of puzzles to uh, entertain my little mind with. And I'm almost done. So now my mind's got to find something. <laughs> See, that's that's how it really works, you know. I don't, I don't believe that human nature is stagnant you know that we'd all sit around and do nothing if there were things that needed to be done we're organized enough uh in the life that we live to keep in you know get in touch with people uh, through the electronic world and accomplish just about any task you can if you can think of doing it you could probably do it through the people you will find available to you on the internet world and uh, the people that aren't on the internet world then there's a lot of people that use the internet for personal shit they're not looking for answers or so or replacing physical society <laughs> they're doing games and i did i don't think i did uh, the social media thing till i was in scotland where i actually used it for any of noticeable amount of time now i'm hooked on reallibertymedia.com and with its pitfalls because personalities man no matter where you go you whoever you are me whoever i am some people are going to clash it's just the nature of the of the societies that we're we're spawned out of now fortunately there's mediators you know that uh, change the subject, take the take the attention off the fight, and throw a song on there, and try to get everybody grouped back up so they can be smart again. But sometimes the jokes, eh, they go back and forth for a while, and then the rest of us just go, hmm. <laughs> it's it's a necessary. It's like a car wreck, you know. They're gonna happen. It's the design of the game that we play. So how we play this game doesn't ever seem to have any value. You know, if you play it electronically or you play it physically, if you're a dirty, rotten scoundrel, that doesn't dictate whether or not you're going to be successful in life. Now, a lot of dirty, rotten scoundrels are very successful people. Now, uh, some some people say, well... That doesn't mean that they're guilty of having... Yes, it, it does. It have to. Uh, unless they're living in a complete uh, bogus lie-based life where everything is a bunch of shit. If you look at all the, the reality behind anybody that's got any wealth, they stole it from other people. 
you don't you don't earn that the kind of money that they they've accumulated in this lifetime and then they parade around in front of us as you know world leaders and bankers and whatever the fuck they want to call themselves to me they're just other people but to society these people have managed to control somehow on a global scale through this network of lying sacks of shit and misrepresented crap to the public through these fucking TV programs. And we always get lied to. The rich keep getting richer. And the public to this day, they're fucking Trump happy now. Good God. I remember, um, what? I don't, I'm not a Trump fan, but I remember turning my nose up to seeing him on TV as a, uh, game show host what was he doing uh you're you're fired or some negative it was just just the concept of it kind of pissed me off but he was on television as a game show host and today he's in the white house as a potus now that's gotta be as obvious to the guy that voted for him as it is to me but somehow they look at it differently. I don't know. Maybe Rob Works or Grimner might have an answer to this particular dilemma that I'm carrying around with me. I do not understand. You know, they, hmm. And it's not to pick on Trump in particular because they're all equally as fucking traitorous and uh, two-faced as they can be. That's how they get there. It was, it was written about Richard Nixon in his days, in his younger days, when he was climbing the ranks of greatness. And other people referred to him as a slithery, snaky, greasy, take advantage of everything in his path kind of guy. Not, he wasn't regarded with kind words and oh he was a wonderful no he was a snake in the grass everybody knew it It wasn't like a secret and if you ever heard the guy talk boy boy he he had jews coming out of every hole he had that poor bastard he must owe them an arm and a leg (laughs) are you finishing my work baby (laughs) good luck don't get hey back up on that crumbs yeah well she's eating over my puzzle (laughs) <laughs> Go away, oh, I'm radioing. She was supposed to be upstairs while I did the radio, so I wouldn't be so easily distracted by the crazy shit she does. <laughs> That's why I married her, I suppose. Because I guess anybody else would avoid me. But sir, nah, she comes right in on... T- right after I've kicked her out of the room, and she comes back an hour later and says, ha, 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 ha. So, there you go. I guess I wear the pants in this family, right, sweetheart? (laughs) Oh, hey, (laughs) I got a yes dear out of her. Anyway, so I completely got left um, shouldered right there. Forgot what the hell my topic of persuasion was. But, let's go back to taking over societies, you know. Maybe that's what society needs is... um, a good swift kick in the society because it's not working out very well. I I have this funny feeling that I'm only one of a few people that are relatively aware of this taking place. Now, one of stop doing that while I'm talking. Now, one of the things that you might notice is the guy sitting in the White House openly refers to the government that he physically and mentally represents as a swamp. (laughs) I came from the days when it was Camelot. Go away, oh, out, get, leave. You're ruining my, uh, she's ruining my, my, my mood here. You're not helping, sweetheart. (laughs) Rob says to my radio. (laughs) Trying. Give the world to Grim Nier. <laughs> yeah, Grim. Let's give it to Grim. Grim, he doesn't deserve. Poor guy. Should just leave him alone. But nah, Grim would go. Hey, 
do what you can live with, fuckers. And if you do it, if you do it bad shit, be careful. <laughs> Some of their shit is loaded. <laughs> Some of these idiots shoot back. You know, because not everybody is a, a domesticated fucking follower of the state. There, there are those in the world that choose to uh, stand their ground and fight. Me, I'm not, oh, no, no, no. I am not one of those crazy, uh, I'm fighting the fucking law people. No, that's a, that's a dead end. And even if it's not a dead end, by the time you're done, what you got left is all shot up with bullets. And, nah, fuck it. That's more, just more destruction on top of destruction, so. Hmm. But of course, I live in this reality that's dictated by a, a pleasant people that don't show as much interest in forcing somebody out in the street from their home in the first place and Grimner says I don't want it I don't know what I offered you but mm, well there you go don't take it whatever it is you traitor hmm. oh you don't want the world ah uh, you I forgot what we were we were teasing you about it Cirque's over with the dog now but uh yeah, I know you don't want it. See, that's the kind of guy that would serve best. But what they would do is overwork the poor fucker. So you'd need, like, one of these guys every two years. And two years as in charge, doing the shit for everybody, and taking care of all he's there. But, you know, no. You don't do business. You don't, no. You don't go traveling around and golfing and no you you're taking care of the country for the two years that you're there or get the fuck out and we'll find somebody that's wants to and if you took a fucking survey just the people that are unqualified to do it the list would be endless so just imagine if it was something that would actually do us some good the list would be tremendous and it's the Throwing money in, into the government shit to run it. Now, that's where you fuck up. That's the problem. If you took the money out of politics, you'd what you'd end up with is basically uh, the same people, but their profit would be coming from a legitimate business, not some you know scam that the government's pulling on the people. But... People don't really seem to understand that the, the problem is that we have is government stands between us and the villain that's fucking us. They they put up a penetrating wall. You can't fight without loads of money. Money, 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 and lawyers, lawyers, lawyers. And when you research all that, you find out the money's all fake. We're all in debt. It doesn't fucking matter. We might as well not even goddamn work for the uh, what we're getting is far from what what we're told oh wow we get promised the moon you know yeah the moonwalk there you go this is a good example something that can't be fucking done but here's a government that is so desperately looking to be seen in a certain light that they're willing to fake that they did it and then poorly lie about being caught for the next 40 years and here we are and people still some of them believe that we went to the fucking moon and there is absolutely no proof that it ever happened just this illusion presented to the public through the media that you know the cia gave up all that they stopped all that mk ultra years ago they don't do that anymore <laughs> So, so the the shit that we saw on that TV was sent to us on certain wavelengths and this, that, and the other, all these technical things that actually changes the outcome of the person that visually saw it, how they re how they represent what they saw is way different than the next guy, but the belief in it is pretty much the same if you most of them if they you saw them do it on tv then it was true and that was their thing is they did it on tv well okay now we've got people with 
dozens of them out there that's shown you they take the they take the film and they show you how this is wrong and how that couldn't have happened and the flag is at the wrong angle and if this camera had been able to do this and then blah 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 and by the time they're like five minutes into it you're obviously if you're still listening then you you see what the hell the point of it all is and they they do it to this day to us all coca-cola the other night thursday i think there was a big freaking coca-cola diesel truck big son of a bitch 40 probably a 48 foot trailer huge red lights red body lights and all this kind of stuff and they had lined up everybody and their kid i guess they were giving away coke as a uh, some kind of a platform to make sales you know uh, tr uh, promotional i didn't get any because i don't drink this stuff anymore but there's a lot of people that did and in my mind to me what i was thinking is kind of similar i went wow if you guys knew the serious damage that that does to you over the course of your life and then of course they go well yeah but you smoke okay well the damage that i'm doing to me as serious as you take it and think it is uh the damage that the coke does is worse and i i was really convinced of this after i saw the mexican version of uh a Mexican cleaning rust off a bumper, and he used a bottle of Coke. You watched him open it, the fizz, the whole thing, pours it out onto the rag, and he's scrubbing the bumper. And it takes him about 15 minutes, I think. And sure as fuck, they, don't, they, they do a pretty good job with just using Coca-Cola to clean the rust off. And I saw that and went, wow. Okay. And then I smoke cigarettes and other stuff, you know, flowers. And people say, well, the wear and tear on your lungs and da-da-da-da. And I think about it. And I came up with this decision the other day. I was telling Cirque, maybe a week ago, I told her, uh, after the winter comes and goes, I'm going to start swimming again. But this time it's my idea, not somebody else inviting me or there's a swimming pool in the house already. So uh, this is me going out of my way to to chase something that I want for a change. And it, it makes the swimming more, uh, the idea of it is more enjoyable than, well, you have to do it because, you know, you, you have to do something about your arrangement or whatever that you have to do this and instead it's the reverse is i want to do it and for years and years when i've lived where there was swimming i i refused to use the pool more than maybe once every two or three months and that goes back to 2000 but mm, anyway so maybe i'm just a spoiled brat but i do i do my walking so that I'm staying in healthy enough to uh, to do the things that I expect to be comfortable doing at my age. Never was a runner, so running uh, I hated all the running I ever had to do was somebody you know expecting me to do it, and then of course because I could swim, running wasn't all that big a deal. It was just a, a different you know different kind of um, pounding. I thought the shock to the legs was a little overwhelming. I'd rather fight water than concrete or whatever the fuck I was running on. Anyway, in a perfect world, I'll talk about my aversion to concrete and all the horrible things that happen to you when you're on it. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was just thinking about the, the good old days and, and how they apply to me now, you know. At this point in life, and what do I want to do with myself? <clears throat> Especially when it's, it's peaceful and quiet, and, it, and you have a mind like mine. I suppose uh, if you, if I was to sit idle and, and just pay attention to the internet all the time, or watch movies, just dull myself, you know, that uh, 
I don't know, I could just sit around and get lazy, but it doesn't seem to be the the road that I choose, you know. I've noticed, like, today, I was hardly on here at all. I wanted to, I'm working on my little puzzle on the other side of the room, and I wanted to finish it before the show, but I missed by about 100 pieces. So, you know, you make a little goal in life, and sometimes you hit them, and sometimes you don't. But still, I don't know, maybe you're not the goal kind of person. I don't I don't think Cirque's a goal-oriented person. Cirque just grabs something and does what's in front of her. Not me. I like to attack my you know, idea, like, <clears throat> like the puzzle. You know, I'm going to plan out my strategy of... What part of the thing am I going to look for first and put together? And It's some kind of like a, a mental, uh, hmm. it's like a, like a fight in a sense. You know, if you're conquering the odds of being able to locate something, to put it together. And it must be something I was uh, taught as important as a kid because to this day, doing something... Uh, within the guidelines of a, a beginning and an end still appeal to me. You know, I am anarchist minded, but I'm not insane. Some things just obviously have a beginning and an end. Now, war is not one of those things. You do not have to have a war. A war is an option that we're led to believe. I don't get how. There's no logic to a war with an enemy thousands of miles away from where you are. It doesn't make any sense. So the end result to me is, hmm, this ain't going to be sounding too good to my American friends. But uh, I think of America as a totalitarian kind of dictatorship that preaches one thing and does another. And don't really care to be, you know, owned by those particular people, you know, but the good side of it is most folks in the real world are not as critical of society as we are, you know, like the Rob Works and the Grim Nerds of the world, the, yeah, the Dort Cakes, hey, Mental, Mental is not too fond of the society either, he has an issue with the chemtrails. I know from talking to him. It's not just my opinion. No, I believe it too. See, so when two people, one of them living in one part of the world and another living in another part of the world, both look at the same exact same thing and come out of it with the same exact answer, then there's something to that. Because the whole game is designed so that me and Mantle look at the same thing but don't see it the same way. <clears throat> and I believe that the information me and Mantle are talking about is from a completely different level of understanding in the first place than you would get with a complete stranger that you don't know. And if you did, you'd be very fortunate, but it wouldn't be so ex like, oh, I expect this to happen. It would be the, the farthest thing from what you would expect. But I've, uh, I have grown to uh, appreciate that there's something going on amongst the, the governments, all of them. This world global domination shit. If it doesn't get stopped soon, it's going to really be a problem. It's a problem now, but... It, they haven't done anything to the moment that cannot be reversed, repaired, or... Well, the knowledge is out there, so the dangerous part of the whole game was for the information to do all the horrible shit that these people do collectively now all their secrets are online for everybody to see but they thought ahead and the good part of it is 90% of the people that see it don't know what they're fucking looking at if they did they wouldn't fall for the scam that we call glo climate change yeah climate change is wild duh I thought we did that four times a year as a goddamn group. 
Now it's against the law for the climate to change. Go, what? Oh, yeah, they're going to regulate this and regulate that and tax and fine and based on what? I don't know. That's what the government's going to tell. They take care of all that shit. So what what you got <laughs> is a captive audience. And never forget, my friends out there in Radio Land, we always have implied consent for those of us that don't want to comply. So what they do is, if, if you're like me and you, you take your action by not taking an action, then these fucking thieves in power, what they've done is they've found a way to use that against me and use implied consent. And if you don't know what implied consent is, look it up. I've posted it. I've seen other people post it. So I figure everybody on the, the real liberty media dot com chat room, they know all about implied consent. Probably heard Hal mention it a few times too over the years. But it is a weapon of mass fucking deception. It's unbelievable what the government can do to us because we didn't find the file that they put under the you know garbage can between three and five Tuesday morning. Wait a minute, you know that well, it was right there for you to see it. But yeah, if you're a garbage man and you work in the night shift. <laughs> Anyway, let's see. Dirt Cakes is all about... Yes, that's true. Cool. I hope so. I was talking about the uh, way the, they, the, the media treats us about this. Uh, intrusions. I don't know what to call this. Society is just the most intrusive fucking mess. They got experts from every fucking field in the world pitching you shit that doesn't fucking work. And the shit that does work, they've they've synthesized it from something that actually did work. So what you're buying is a knockoff. And <laughs> it's probably more expensive to create what they're making than it is to just grow it and process it. But, you know, government. <laughs> they, they want us fucked. We are so far beyond fucked. They legalized weed, everybody. This is how stupid people are. Legalized weed. Why? Because you can smoke it and what? What is going to happen when you smoke pot? Huh? Well, let's look at the information we have available to us. I think what happens is people get along better and their driving improves. And cookie sales soar. <laughs> Doritos. <laughs> pizza <laughs> I grew at way beyond munchies I don't even get munchies anymore I haven't for years smoking the hatchich anyway I don't know maybe it works on everybody else I've never thought of asking but I've not heard anybody say any I got the munchies this is the, the farthest thing from what I, I'm accustomed to now Now, when I, when I smoke my little pipe loads and share them with the world, the world says, ah, shut up. Because, you know, it's not really a big deal anymore. And what I'm insulted by is that it ever was a big deal. You know, it just gives the, the adults in the world this false sense of security on ammunition they can fire at somebody in a disagreement and call you a pothead loser and i don't i don't know what the pothead part's got to do with losing or winning anything you know that's a, as bad as nigger or spick or kike or whatever the fuck else it's all the same so i don't get all wrapped up in the jew thing i mean Everything that you say to somebody is going to insult somebody. And look at the dork cakes and the moose girl saying hello to each other on the reallibertymedia.com chat. It's kind of quiet today. Maybe I've just driven everybody out to the yard to go do gardening. I've had that effect on people a time or two. My topics aren't always so 
enlightening. Oh, I'd like to be enlightening, but I'm not. Just got a regular old uh, quiet guy life, you know. I live in a peaceful little village in a place far, far away. And I took some pictures of the hill I was talking about today. Because, you know, if th this place is ever invaded, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> yeah, right. I okay. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. There's nothing here to take in the first place, but you know, I'm I'm not the military advisor. You know, I'm not even a military minded kind of guy, but I would think where I'm standing on on this dirt, if you were coming here to take it over, I would be like, Why? There's not much there to take over. But Copenhagen's pretty cool. That would be a Wow, 400,000 people, man. That'd be a party of a lifetime. And they got all those cool old buildings to destroy. They even have a uh, like a Disneyland, a real small one. But they got a Disneyland right in the center of uh, town by the train station. You come out of the train, and it's big. I mean, it, it takes a bit to walk around and all like that. But they've got uh, amusement rides, and you can see them from outside the grounds as you travel around because I used to pass it when I went to Freetown from the apartment and still to this day I, mean, I would recommend if you're gonna ever gonna see a city I would say Denmark go to Copenhagen because uh, Copenhagen offers both the the status mind of of Copenhagen and the anarchist mind of Freetown and, and they both they work hand in hand for the most part Except when the uh, the greed of the the war on drugs puts its face up and people need to you know see some activity, and I think everybody knows it's coming before it happens. There's no way to get into Freetown. They they see it coming. It it's <laughs> it's very very obvious. So, and it's such a small place in the first place. But um, it's a kick. Uh, I was talking with Cirque the other day and she said uh, the Rolling Stones came in and you know they bicycled into Freetown and they did their, but you know they're high profile but Woody Harrelson he sneaks into Freetown and, and he goes there to just stay low key and most everybody's stoned anyway so I don't give a fuck or notice that he's there <laughs> that's really the I mean and it's there must be a, it's a little place where we congregated but it had I don't know, 25 or 30 kind of picnic tables and, and uh, canopies over them for, you know, the direct heat, sun, and whatnot. And they had little restaurants, and you could go get hamburgers and beers and drinks and sit there and roll your spliff and play backgammon and chess and talk to people and just get along with each other. And I went there about once a week on an average for at least eight months. And I never once did I ever see anybody having a fight or a disagreement or an argument the whole time I'd, I'd been in and out of the place. So Denmark has, and that goes for the, the population of Copenhagen too. Now I'd heard, heard some things, and car wrecks, and little mishaps, people dropping shit off their bicycles, but violence, I didn't see anybody lift their hands to anybody and haven't since uh, I love Scotland now that's kind of interesting to me but you know that's the way I, I <laughs> that's the way I like it and I even had that in the big city so maybe my uh, my bubble of protection you know from from the the nasty shit that could go through my mind doesn't happen you know and I'm just a decent person out in the out in the freaking world <laughs> But uh, sadly, I I think that of most people, it's the people that run shit. Uh, you know, beyond the local a local layer, you know, something bigger where their greed bone gets involved, or you don't know, maybe they've been threatened. You do this and you do that, or guess what? You know, your wife's gonna have three fingers when you get home from work tonight. Now I've heard stories of that be told. You know, to explain why the, the politicians are always corrupt, lying, sacks of shit. 
you know, well, they were blackmailed, and oh, if they didn't do it, then well, what then? What kind of people does that leave that person thinking is in power? I mean, if if the control is beyond the seat of of decision, and it goes to some invisible deep state, <laughs> God, deep state. The fuck is the difference between the deep state and the overt up your ass fucking state that you look at every day on the internet? Jesus Christ. These people think that they've got a right to do whatever they fucking please to do, the Jews. And I'm not naming anybody in particular, the Jews. But they're deeply embedded in the United States. Huge, 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 huge. Most of your... Uh, public office holders have dual citizenship and the ones that don't they swear an oath to APAC and Israel comes first and this is a see anti-semitic it's like nigger you can't say that about the Jews you can't say nigger you can't say you can't say well alright all, all this uh, what's being represented to me as political correctness crap is censorship you know if you can't criticize somebody because of a word then guess what you can't criticize those people doesn't matter what word you use and I challenge authority that says to me that I don't have a right to use the information at my you know fingertips and make a decision of my own and say I'm not supporting these people. They're doing wrong. And if you hold that viewpoint, guess what they say? You're a racist and you're an anti-Semite. And you da, 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 da. Fuck. It doesn't have anything to do with the Jews on a religious level. It's got everything to do with them on a financial level. And that is disguised and hidden behind this crap religious nonsense that we're fed. It's a bunch of crap there's anything true to it you wouldn't have to be convinced that it was true you would be shown that it's true by some form of physical proof not believe everything or go to hell and burn oh no please or this other crap with the jews were the chosen fucking people what kind of wow i mean if it's that easy to con all of you at once I want to be on their side. I, I hate to admit it, okay? But, as an anarchist, I, I find the whole thing completely absurd and re ridiculous. I mean, even if you took a seriously you know, serious look at the history of the people that supposedly lived at the times that these people lived... Uh, you'll find that what you're reading in your Bible is basically fiction. <laughs> these people, but some of these people's timelines lined up with actual historical people, but the people that they wrote about didn't seem to ever physically exist. So, yeah, it seems to work on the indoctrinated mind of the religious, but to me it's just... Nah, you're selling me. You're, you're three card money. Nah, I ain't gonna play that game. You know they they pitch you the good and the evil, and you get your ass raped by both sides. So no, it's a con. There's a third party in there you're not being told about. Because we're you know we're living in this life of just absolute bullshit, right? Where. It really doesn't matter at this point in time what you challenge. If you challenge something that's actually used by the, the public, the common man, everyday Joe, you'll find a horror story connected to the most popular of the shit that we can, you know, use as consumers. And what comes to the top of the list every fucking time, Johnny? <sighs> Cell phones. Now, the Internet, I don't know if we beat the wireless by using the cord, the cable, but I don't use the wireless when I'm doing my radio progress. Pro, huh, progress. <clears throat> I smoke a little too much sometimes, but I still, 
I don't use the uh, Wi-Fi when I do my radio or when I interact on the internet. But at night, sometimes I, I got an upstairs that doesn't have a, a cable long enough to reach the, the modem. So we Wi-Fi up there occasionally watching a film. But I don't think that uh, at this point in my life, I'm going to get the result that they're trying to get from me because of the additives that I add to the recipe I already have. You know, like the turmeric and the baking soda and the rose hip and uh, what else do I, I call additives. But those are the three basic things that I feel help me get, you know, stay physically mobile and I, I'm relatively pain free. I mean, as far as uh, no chronic kind of anything, just age will make you, you know, uncomfortable about shit but it, nothing specifically like I can't, oh i can't walk across the, none, none of that shit so you know i have the ability today to make a verbal record of you know how i feel about life and my disappointment in life is not from people it's from the organizations that claim to represent them because we just keep getting story after freaking story and lie after lie over and over they call the freaking government the swamp i heard him i'm going to clean out the swamp wait a minute so what he's saying in is he's running a swamp right now he hasn't cleaned anything all he did was he replaced the people he didn't like with um, goldman sachs bankers and made the swamp a different color. So <laughs> it's it's still the, it's still the same game. I, if you think it's different, I'd sure like to know how you got to that decision. Let's see. Mr. Rob Works is posting church fire leads to discovery of illegal gambling room. Authorities say from the trenches. World report. Wow. <laughs> Go figure. Ah. Uh, Cake's got the boot. He's probably yeah, internet problems, I would hope. Hate to see him leave without saying later. And I don't think he did. So I would take the high road and say Mr. Cakes will be returning to us shortly. <laughs> eh, they're very quiet in the, the chatter chatter room today. I don't seem to be inspiring much communication amongst my peers at the real liberty media dot com chat department but there's always tomorrow <laughs> uh, oh you do gotta leave okay <laughs> see you later pancakes whoop he must be up to something and uh anyhow what is going on in the world that's of any interest? How did the invasion go? Did the, what was that, Nicaragua? Or so, I don't know. Some Central American-based third world country that there, there's no opportunity in, supposedly. But plenty of Catholic breeding going on. You know, because that's what the Catholics do. <sighs> wow, there's lots and lots and lots of them, too. And then when you don't have those yo-yos, then you got Protestants. Now, they're pretty... <laughs> Archie Bunker was, was a Catholic, and he was terrified of the Protestants. Boy, they made TV shows about it in the 70s with uh, All in Family. <laughs> Religion. It's huge. People really, I don't know. They, Instead of uh, claiming that anybody knows anything, they present two versions of, well, maybe it's like this. You know, because with a telescope, why you can look out here and see, <laughs> I, okay, <laughs> that's what's, that's what's going to happen. I can turn on the computer and I can see George Harrison playing live in, you know, the Bangladesh concert. But, you know, it's still 
you know, seeing is believing, right? <laughs> so just because I see it, something about my brain and my uh, conscious awareness and my lack of my lack of being able to visually see has made me so comfortable with taking a second look and being sure of what I saw because my vision will uh, trick me. It's like, uh, what do you call it? When you go into the desert and you see the uh, oasis off in the distance, but it's a, it's a, a visual hallucination. And if you stare at it at the, in the heat of the day, when it's like 90, 100 degrees, and if you stare at the horizon, you can visually, I visually see a wave in that heat coming up off the ground. And uh, here we are again, you know. The vibrations that I see might be different from the vibrations that you see, but we all see something. I I was talking about this one a couple of shows ago. That even though uh, when I close my eyes, my mind is still visually seeing something there. It's not like a total black pitch darkness. There's there's uh, it would compare to uh, like looking at a, a germ under a microscope lens. <laughs> that kind of world exists when I my eyes are closed. And I, I've managed to use that as a way to go to sleep in my life. People thought, wow, you, you just lay down and knock out. What, what are you on? <laughs> so I think it's that meditation thing. I don't know what to call it other than that. But, you know, when uh, I'm never stressed, like, for sleep sometimes I just lazy ass and I don't want to get up but Cirque likes to get up early in the morning and have coffee and play on the internet a little bit before she goes in and other days she just does that and then sits on the couch and works from the house so she's got it made pretty much and you know we threw her out of here so I wouldn't talk about her but she always comes to mind because I, I live with her my best friend so I guess uh, it would be like not mentioning Grimm or Rob, you know, because Grimm and Rob on the RLM have just, they, they've supported me through times where our fellow um, members of the group strongly disagree with my stand on particular ideas. So, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not apologizing to anybody. I believe what I believe. And you believe what you believe. But if you take it as the disagreeing as anything serious, then I don't get it. Because I'm looking at it in terms of delivery of maybe rude to people or being a nasty fuck. But disliking the, the Federal Reserve Bank, that that should be an expectation that we would have of our fellows is to be as thoroughly disappointed and want something to stop this mess from continuing. But that's not what we have. Ah, uh, he has zero ether, so he cannot send a token. <clears throat> and then Rob Works posts, Man 21 shot dead by cops in Alabama mall shooting did not fire gun as police reveal the gunman is still loose what okay i don't know if he's loose then they did maybe they shot him and they just didn't kill him who knows all i know about america anymore is that cirque's not gonna go there to visit it with me so guess what folks you lucky fuckers so i'm staying i'm staying with the dane yeah, I know I say it all the time, don't I? But I'll tell you this, though. You know, if you got something in life, whatever something is, it, it's mental. It, there's, you know, sure you can, oh, yeah, but she's alive and there's her to her. But I believe there's more to us than just what we can physically understand or mentally understand about it. You know, because if you can put your hands on something, that makes it more real to your mind somehow. But looking at it is the beginning. You know, you go, oh, okay. Then you grab it and you pick it up and you see what it does and fuck with it. And, and it brings the, 
that feeling of reality to me to the surface and that's where my attention is at you know so that I don't accidentally slam my finger in a box or uh, burn my face with the cigarette lighter my body and mind coordinate different multiple activities all at one time you know and some people are uh, uncoordinated and they try to do the same freaking thing I can do but they knock their coffee over doing it and I excuse me and I say that out of experience because I too learned how to do what I do now because at one point I was careless and I did not pay attention to all of my obstacles and move shit accordingly so you know in life I've learned that some things are stationary and they're not changing no matter what you do to them banking education politics religion shit like that and all the input in the world is just a it's a waste of fucking time and it shows to be true because one of the number one uh, debt accumulators at the moment right now is the american or maybe not just america but the global education system at university level The debt that they hold over the future players is incredible, you know. But, of course, that's just the ones that aren't rich enough to pay their way through and not be worried about owing the government anything. But can you imagine, I didn't grow up like this. I don't even understand what the appeal is to pursue a, an adult life as an indentured servant. I mean, right out the gate, you owe the government money for the education that you borrowed, you know, you borrowed money to to pay for. So, so some part of me is broken, and I do not understand how you can put education and paid for in the same sentence and attach a dollar fucking value to it. That is one of the most disgusting fucking things about us as human beings. Information should be free at every level, about every subject, to everybody for no fucking money. Outside of operating costs, what would that be? A library or an internet source? Now, most of that we, what we see is bullshit anyway, but within the bullshit is the truth. The truth is there, you know, and it comes in strange little forms, strange little men talking about things that you were taught in school and all your grown life were harped on about how these things are this and these things are that. But what we weren't explained and what wasn't explained, that was a handful, but I find was uh, they didn't lay the information in a in a proper way f to be understood you know they they tell you that the waste they relabeled it the product that they're actually wanting they relabeled it waste so wow what a manipulative game so now they're going to tell you how much waste you can have and blah 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 and bury and change and reorganize it in legal fashion so that it's in some loop to loop that we don't understand because we're not bar members <laughs> that's why bill clinton said it depends on what your definition of is is And to this day, well, maybe a month or two back, I still saw a comment about uh, Bill saying that in court. It was, it's printed in shit. Uh, that's what it was. It's, it's in the information links that I've looked for Clinton under, and I've found reference to that when he, when he mentioned that in court. But what nobody mentions is that they're speaking in a secret language. And he was doing the the most correct thing is identifying the fucking form of the word they're using so he wouldn't make a mistake and say the wrong v version of the answer. Because it's not about the truth, it's about the order of the words and which words you use to create the sentence. It's a game, it's like chess, only with words. 
and we've allowed this, okay, somehow or another as collective. I, I do not know how to explain this part of it, but there it, it, a rise up against the court system would be fruitless because people are convinced to this day, even with the Patriot Act, even with the NDA, NDAA, they still think they got a constitution. Well, that was gone in eight, 18... 1871, I think. All these things, we've just been lied to. They're stories. Just like the dollar has value. It has no value. It's a piece of paper. It's a debt note. It, the value... <laughs> how do you define the word value? See, Then you go into all this legal, tricky, dicky, snarky, bullshit game they want to play with us. And we don't know what's going on for the most part. If the masses were to wake up and realize they are being manipulated, oppressed, and corralled like sheep, revolution would sweep the land. People are being driven mad by an overwhelming feeling of cognitive dissonance. That's right, Mr. Robworks. That is the truth. Pretty much the way it is. But look at how far I get when I doubt that the, the globe exists. That's all I got to do. I don't have to define anything. All I got to just say, well, maybe not. And people start shaking their heads because their life dictates everything that they understand. Everything they've ever been taught takes them to that level. They go, yeah, the world is round and it's round because of this and that and the other. And <clears throat> to me, it doesn't work. I go, wait a minute. The people that told me that story are all, all the same people that brought me the Kennedy assassination. Hmm. Same people that brought me 9-11. Same people that uh, brought me Social Security, birth certificate. <laughs> oh, the luxuries that I have in my possession. Huh? Those people? Okay. Well, then I don't believe it. No. Nah. Because uh, we're not told the truth about the birth certificate. If we are told the truth, it's... I, it's on this little link I found called Meet Your Straw Man. And it's not very popular. Ooh, I'm telling you, I'm over at Minds.com. I got that at the top of my page. People want to know anything about me. Look at that. Go look at Minds.com and see what Flash somebody thinks about society. And I got proof. Look around you. You don't need to have anything fucking explained if you have a brain. We know, like Mary, Mary read the, uh, which, uh, what was it called? The Way Sears Manifesto, maybe a week or two back on her show. And I thought that was pretty cool. I like listening to the guy sing it to talk with, I guess that's rapping it, but he does and he doesn't. But it's a very optimistic uh, version of how certain people view society. Now, the odd thing about it is those are the dorks of society. That's what you know. society labels you when you think outside of what everybody else is jumping all over and you think, oh, nah, I don't think so. Because I remember snubbing my nose at, at um, CDs when they came out. I said, mm, they're too hard to really maintain, I thought. You know, they're lighter than vinyl and all that, but now nah, we've come a long way and tape tape's superior to the, the concept of CD. And then CD was eventually re, re, replaced again by the internet and the MP3 players. and These little things you could put in your palm and put 100 albums on it, 200 albums, and just listen to shit all the fuck, never listen to the same thing twice in, in a month. Or a year, <laughs> whatever it would take, and and uh, I don't know if I saw that coming at us, but I do remember being uh, relatively unimpressed with the the CDs when they were first brand new. What was that? Ninety or so? maybe ninety somewhere in the early nineties when they first came out. But I had somebody buy me one. And because they were so much lighter than, you know, tape and carrying around and whatnot, because I had myself a little portable 
so I could listen to my music in public places. And anyway, that gets us to the end of this Dork Table program today. I don't know. I was all over the place, just biz- pissing and moaning about the world at large and all the shit it does. But together, enough of us could figure out what the correct answer is and just spread it to the groups and you know, maybe that would make a dent. That's my goal is to, you know, be connected to people that at least know what the fuck the reality is. And uh speaking of that, we got tomorrow morning coming up on Sunday, Grimner plays the blues. And uh He'll play those blues right up to the trivia game. I like to play trivia. Played a little last week and started out pretty good, but it didn't hold up. Now, the other brainiacs were a little hot, and they just tended to pound on me. Mr. Rob Works was there. He had a he had a hammer. <laughs> Miss Kate and Moose Girl and Grimner, they were pounding the nails in me like I was cool. But... I have a plan for tomorrow. <laughs> and I like Peaky and the Brain. I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> and after that, that we, we just do that shit because uh, Hal Anthony is going to come on with Behind the Woodshed. You know, just don't worry about it. He's he's not going to hurt anyone. He just knows what to do. And that's that's the thing that's distracting. You know, that's not distracting. It's... Uh, it makes people sound negative to other people is the disappointment that we have because whatever we're into about the you know free in the mind and getting away from the government kind of thing it it's all based on common sense <laughs> and some people uh can handle playing it through the system's way and that's where hell helps them gets them to the answer that will carry them where they're going i think that's uh, about it and then tuesday you got graham z miss mary riding her rocket chair all over the damn place wednesday and friday okay she comes on in the e- early evening in <laughs> kansas i think it's like six o'clock in kansas when miss mary hits the airwaves and then after that I don't think there's a break or something, but you got Moose Girl and Grimner doing the Freakers Ball Friday night. (laughs) And he plays music, and she just tells us how things really are on Miss Moose. Uh, And then back, oh, I forgot my own show. I'm um, Tuesday night. (laughs) I'm going to be doing In a Perfect World. I don't know. I guess I'm doing all the radio alone again. And eh. If it's entertaining, cool. And if it's not entertaining, somebody jump on Tuesday night and we'll talk about uh, muskrat love and, you know, why there's 28 genders to choose from all of a sudden. That might be an interesting topic. You know, go, hey, how many genders are there now? <laughs> Two. <laughs> yeah, just because you want to fuck a hamburger doesn't give you the right to be a special damn gender what's wrong with you people get get a grip but i identify as a toaster right anyway so there you go and we'll end this dork tale with uh, words of wisdom from somebody that told me once long ago keep your pants up your skirt down and walk home in a group. Thanks a lot, everybody.